get mind-blowing photo renders with this model. Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I want to show you something that might be the new king of photorealism with stable diffusion. Let's have a closer look at that. So the model is called Photone and it is specialized on photorealism. Now the results here on the model page themselves are not specifically great but when you experiment with that a little bit you can actually get really really nice high resolution results. Results. And from my testing and also from talking to friends on Discord, I figured out some settings that give you specifically great results with this model. You can also additionally check out the information down here for the recommended settings. Mine are a little bit different from that. So here you have some information, for example, in the negative prompt, there is some information here for the sampler, for the steps, for the CFG scale, for the resolution you might want to use use with that and also for the high res fix. But this of course also depends on what kind of workflow you have when you usually generate your images. So here let's have a look at the different sampling methods that I have tested and you can see that they get different results, sometimes even a different composition of the image. Now the ones with the pink line are the ones that I've ruled out and from the different sampling methods, even with this low resolution, you can see that sometimes, for example, the eye is off like here, for example, and other little details are not so good or the image might even be blurry or not as detailed as you want it to be either in the face or the hair or the clothing. So there are multiple candidates that are pretty good. Like you can see here, DPM++ 2M Keras is very nice. But overall, it turns out that DPM++ 2M is the best model here. And here we have the big version that is rendered with the sampling method. As you can see, the hair is very nice and detailed. Also, the eyelashes are very nice and the eyes themselves. Another important detail here is in the clothing where we get very nice details, but also here on the arm, we get a very nice pattern in the clothing fabric. So also that is a pretty important part. And one more thing you want to look out for in a model like this is the skin texture and also how the skin is reflecting light. And when you look here at the neck, for example, but also here at the cheek of the face, we get some very nice texture in the face and some very nice details and light reflection that looks very realistic. So let's have a look at some prompts and the changes I made. So here again, we have the image of the woman who looks very, very nice from all of these details in here. And let's have a look for the prompting of that. So here we have a classic prompt for realistic vision that I'm using here. So it's raw photos or the yellow parts are the realistic vision parts. Portrait of a beautiful blonde woman wearing a red shirt. It's very simple. After that in round brackets, high detailed skin with a weight of 1.2. After that 8K UHD DSLR soft light high quality film grain Fujifilm X-T3. Now for the negative prompt, and this is going to be the same for basically all of the other images, we have bad dream and unrealistic dream. Both of these are negative embeddings that I'm going to link below the video. They are for the dream shaper model, but I found that they also work very nicely for other models. Of course, you can also try out other negative embeddings. And then in this case, I also added drawing, painting, digital art, helmet, nude, NSFW, large breasts. So the last three words are mostly for testing of other scenes, but I just left them in there just to be sure that we have a clothed person. So that is always kind of a good way to put that in there. Here we have the next image of a bearded guy with a very nice suit. Let's zoom in here again. You can see we have very nice details for the beard hair, for the eye. It's a very, very nice quality. Now in this case, I changed the prompt a little bit to add a additional trick that I'm often using. So most of that is the same, but up here, we have now full sharp detailed face, blue eyes. Blue eyes or defining the eye color often helps you get better defined eyes and then full sharp helps you to get an image that is not blurred in any of the details and just gives you a higher quality and detailed face also gives you a better focus on the face. Of course, then for the rest of it, we have portrait of a beautiful man with a beard in a gray suit. So 
nothing special and the rest of the prompt is the same as before. Here we have another scene of an older woman with a wrinkled face and that always looks very good, works very well in this case. We have some very very nice details here. I love how the light is reflecting from the skin, how we see a little bit of this kind of oiliness of the skin which is completely normal and part of how a natural good skin looks like but also the wrinkles look very nice they are in the right position again the hair turned out very good and what we also have here is for example you can see with older skins you have these little blemishes here that are just part of aging and that's also wonderful that we have these details in here also here on the neck with the older skins so it's not just the face it's also the rest of the body that is included in that so that turned out really nicely here we have the prompt again most of that is the same. So up here we have portrait of a beautiful 70 year old woman. In this case, I write wrinkled face to get these very nice wrinkles in there. Pink summer dress, full sharp again, detailed face, blue eyes to get this nice additional focus and sharpness and details in there. Then here we have a very nice warrior again with blue eyes with very nice armor. Now if you want to you can even improve this armor by using specific armor Loras from Civit AI that you check out. Let me know in the comments if you want to have a video about how to improve different parts of the image by using Loras to get much better results. So in that case the prompt again is very similar. I just changed up here portrait of a 30 year old warrior. Now here I wrote wearing shiny metal armor that is an important part here because otherwise you might get a dull armor you might get a black armor you might get just a normal armor but because we have a shiny metal armor you can see that for example here for the breastplate we have some reflection in there and also this nice looking more kind of parade looking armor is also coming from that shiny armor part of the prompt. And last but not least we have here our young punk guy with the pink hair. Again the details look very nice. What I like here also is this little shine here of the first beard hairs and shaving them off. So that looks very good and really buys into the character of this young punk guy here. The hair and also the haircut is very nice and really fits the scene so that's all very very good. Down here we also have some tattoos. Now the good thing here is they are also a little bit faded already which is very nice and gives more character to the scene overall. And when we look here at the leather jacket we see some very nice leather texture. It actually feels like leather. Looking at it you can almost smell the leather material. Again let's have a look here at the prompt. Most of the stuff is the same. We have a close-up portrait of a young man punk with pink hair wearing black leather outfit. Well, I have a typo here, should be outfit, but it still worked. Maybe the details would even be better if I wrote that correctly. Standing on a street at night, full sharp detailed face, blue eyes. Now for the settings in the text to image render, I'm here using the sampling method DPM++2M, plus plus but with 25 sampling steps. I have face restore turned on with a resolution of 512 by 768 and here I'm using a CFG scale of only three because from my testing of CFG scales I found that that gives a pretty good result. So here we have the results of the different CFG scales from three up the way to nine. And here when we zoom in, even in this lower resolution, you can see that with the higher CFG scales, we are starting to get some errors or we are getting less detail in the image. So for example, with CFG scale four, there is some problems here with the eyes. And when we go up to the higher CFG scales here, for example, seven again has big problems with the eyes. And with nine, for example, the shape of the face is also changing, not looking as good as before. And again, it has problems here with the eyes. Now at this point, if you want to save some time, you can use a trick to make your image look even better. So you could use here high risk fix with a value of two. I'm using 4x ultra sharp, which I'm also going to link 
below in my video description. I'm using a denoise of 0.2 because this is an upscaling model. So that works great, but it also should stay very similar to the image. And if you wanted to in the same progress, you could also use the A detailer to have a nicer, more high resolution face rendered into the upscaled image. Now, in this case, because of a detailer, you can also use, for example, down here, a different prompt, the negative prompt, or you can also use here a LoRa with a strength of one so that the face is replaced. In that case, I would highly suggest to you that you use the LoRa also in the prompt of the initial render, maybe with a lower value, for example, 0.5 or even lower than that, so that you still give a lot of freedom to the image, but at the same time, you have the body and the head shape similar to what you want to get in the final LoRa. Also, you want to check out my video about a detailer right here. This can do magical things. And I will also have another video about that when I talk about the LoRa training and how to get the best results with the LoRa's you're training. But now I want to show you a method where you get even better results. This is not using high res fix and it's not using a detailer in the step of text to image. Instead, we're going to send the image with all of the information over to image to image. Now, when we have it in here, we are not going to use the upscaling in image to image. Instead, what we are going to do here is to use the SD upscale script. So for that, you want to scroll all the way down to the script and you want to click on that list and select SD upscale from that list. Now in here, you get some additional settings. You can leave most of them as they are here. You have the scale factor. Two should be good, but you can also go higher, like for example, four. And then in here, you have all of your upscalers. Again, I'm selecting 4X ultra sharp. Again, I have a video about the ultra sharp upscaler right here. If you want to have more detail about that, check that out to get really amazing results with that. Another thing you want to do here to avoid errors in the render process is to turn off restore face in this case here, because that might be a problem with the tiling. Because what is happening next in the process is that this is rendering your image in lower resolution tiles and then sticking all of these tiles together to a higher resolution, but also higher quality image for the output. This is also good if you have a slower GPU, because then it doesn't have to have all of the image and the high resolution in the VRAM or in the GPU for the rendering. Instead, it's going to render through the slower resolution tiles and that is good even for all the cards. And then as a result, you get the image I showed you before with these beautiful details with the high resolution with all of the quality in there. And that's it already for today. Leave a subscribe if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.